The Global Geospace Science GGS Wind Satellite is a NASA science spacecraft launched on November 1, 1994, at 9.31 Coordinated Universal Time, from Launch Pad 17B at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Merritt Island, Florida, aboard a McDonnell Douglas Delta II 7925-10 rocket. Wind was designed and manufactured by Martin Marietta Astro Space Division in East Windsor, New Jersey. The satellite is a spin-stabilized cylindrical satellite with a diameter of 2.4 meters and a height of 1.8 meters. It was deployed to study radio waves and plasma that occur in the solar wind and in the Earth's magnetosphere. The spacecraft's original mission was to orbit the Sun at the L1 Lagrangian point, but this was delayed to study the magnetosphere and near-lunar environment when the SOHO and ACE spacecraft were sent to the same location. Wind has been at L1 continuously since May 2004, and is still operating as of October 2018. Wind currently has enough fuel to last over 50 years at L1. Wind continues to collect data and as of March 10, 2018, not including 2018 publications, has contributed data to over 4610 refereed scientific publications. Mission operations are conducted from the Multi-Mission Operations Center (MMOC) in Building 14 at Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. Wind data can be accessed using the SPEDAS software. Wind is the sister ship to GGS Polar. The science objectives of the WIND mission Provide complete plasma, energetic particle, and magnetic field input for magnetospheric and ionospheric studies. Determine the magnetospheric output to interplanetary space in the upstream region. Investigate basic plasma processes occurring in the near-Earth solar wind. Provide baseline ecliptic plane observations to be used in heliospheric latitudes from Ulysses. The science instruments on the wind spacecraft The aim of the International Solar Terrestrial Physics Science Initiative is to understand the behavior of the solar terrestrial plasma environment, in order to predict how the Earth's atmosphere will respond to changes in solar wind conditions. Wind's objective is to measure the properties of the solar wind before it reaches the Earth. The wind spacecraft has an array of instruments including, CONUS, the Wind Magnetic Field Investigation MFI, the Solar Wind and Suprathermal Ion Composition Experiment SMS, the Energetic Particles, Acceleration, Composition, and Transport EPACT Investigation, the Solar Wind Experiment SWE, a three-dimensional plasma and energetic particle investigation 3DP, the Transient Gamma Ray Spectrometer TGRS, and the Radio and Plasma Wave Investigation waves. The CONUS and TGRS instruments are primarily for gamma-ray and high-energy photon observations of solar flares or gamma-ray bursts and part of the gamma-ray coordinates network. The SMS experiment measures the mass and mass-to-charge ratios of heavy ions. The SWE and 3DP experiments are meant to measure, analyze the lower energy below 10 MeV solar wind protons and electrons. The WAVES and MFI experiments were designed to measure the electric and magnetic fields observed in the solar wind. Altogether, the wind spacecraft's suite of instruments allows for a complete description of plasma phenomena in the solar wind plane of the ecliptic. <laughs> <laughs> wind, waves Time domain sampler The electric field detectors of the wind waves instrument are composed of three orthogonal electric field dipole antennas, two in the spin plane roughly the plane of the ecliptic of the spacecraft and one along the spin axis. The complete waves suite of instruments includes five total receivers including, low-frequency FFT receiver called FFT 0.3 Hz to 11 kHz, thermal noise receiver called TNR 4 to 256 kHz, radio receiver band 1 called RAD1 20 to 1040 kHz, radio receiver band 2 called RAD2 1.075 to 13.825 MHz, and the time domain sampler called TDS designed and built by the University of Minnesota. 
The longer of the two spin plane antenna, defined as X, is 100 m tip to tip while the shorter, defined as A, is 15 m tip to tip. The spin axis dipole, defined as EZ, is roughly 12 m tip to tip. When accounting for spacecraft potential, these antenna lengths are adjusted to approximately 41.1 meters, approximately 3.79 meters, and approximately 2.17 meters. Note: these are subject to change and only estimates and not necessarily accurate to two decimal places. The wind waves instrument also detects magnetic fields using three orthogonal search coil magnetometers designed and built by the University of Iowa. The XY search coils are oriented to be parallel to the XY dipole antenna. The search coils allow for high frequency magnetic field measurements defined as BX, BI, and BZ. The wave's Z axis is anti parallel to ZGSE geocentric solar ecliptic direction. Thus, any rotations can be done about the Z axis in the normal Eulerian sense, followed by a change of sign in the Z component of any GSE vector rotated into wave's coordinates. Electric and magnetic field waveform captures can be obtained from the Time Domain Sampler TDS receiver. TDS samples are a waveform capture of 2048 points, 16384 points on the stereo spacecraft per field component. The waveforms are measures of electric field versus time. In the highest sampling rates, the fast TDSF sampler runs at approximately 120,000 samples per second SPS and the slow TDSS sampler runs at approximately 7,500 SPS. TDSF samples are composed of two electric field components typically X and A while TDSS samples are composed of four vectors, either three electric and one magnetic field or three magnetic and one electric field. The TDSF receiver has little to no gain below about approximately 120 Hz and the search coil magnetometers roll off around approximately 3.3 Hz. Topic: <laughs> Thermal noise receiver. The TNR measures approximately 4 to 256 kilohertz electric fields in up to 5 logarithmically spaced frequency bands, though typically only set at 3 bands from 32 or 16 channels per band with a 7 nanovolts HZ one half sensitivity 400 hertz to 6.4 kilohertz bandwidth and total dynamic range in excess of 100 decibels. The data are taken by two multi-channel receivers which nominally sample for 20 milliseconds at a 1 MHz sampling rate see for more information. The TNR is often used to determine the local plasma density by observing the plasma line, an emission at the local upper hybrid frequency due to a thermal noise response of the wire dipole antenna. One should note that observation of the plasma line requires the dipole antenna to be longer than the local Debye length, λ for typical conditions in the solar wind lambda to approximately 7 to 20 meters, much shorter than the wire dipole antenna on wind. The majority of this section was taken from. Topic: <laughs> Wind 3DP. The Wind 3DP instrument designed and built at the Berkeley Space Sciences Laboratory was designed to make full three-dimensional measurements of the distributions of superthermal electrons and ions in the solar wind. The instrument includes three arrays, each consisting of a pair of double-ended semiconductor telescopes each with two or three closely sandwiched passivated ion-implanted silicon detectors, which measure electrons and ions above approximately 20 keV. The instrument also has top hat symmetrical spherical section electrostatic S analyzers with microchannel plate detectors MCPs are used to measure ions and electrons from approximately 3 electron volts to 30 electron volts. The two types of detectors have energy resolutions ranging from delta E E approximately equals 0.3 for the solid state telescopes SST and delta E E approximately equals 0.2 for the top hat S analyzers. The angular resolutions are 22.5 degrees by 36 degrees for the SST and 5.6 degrees near the ecliptic to 22.5 degrees for the top hat S analyzers. The particle detectors can obtain a full 4 pi steradian coverage in one full half spin, approximately 3s for the SST top hat S analyzers. The majority of this section was taken from topic Electrostatic analyzers 
The arrays of detectors are mounted on two opposing booms, each 0.5 meters in length. The top hat S analyzers are composed of four separate detectors, each with different geometry factors to cover different ranges of energies. The electron detectors, EESA, and ion detectors, PESA, are each separated into low L and high H energy detectors. The H and L analyzers contain 24 and 16 discrete anodes, respectively. The anode layout provides a 5.6 degrees angular resolution within plus or minus 22.5 degrees of the ecliptic plane increases to 22.5 degrees at normal incidence to ecliptic plane. The analyzers are swept logarithmically in energy and counters sample at 1024 samples, spin approximately 3 milliseconds sample period. Thus the analyzers can be set to sample 64 energy samples per sweep at 16 sweeps per spin or 32 energy samples per sweep at 32 sweeps per spin, etc. The detectors are defined as follows. EESA low L covers electrons from approximately 3 electron volts to approximately 1 keV. These values vary from moment structure to moment structure depending on duration of data sampling, spacecraft potential, and whether in burst or survey mode. The typical range is approximately 5 electron volts to approximately 1.11 keV, with an 11.25 degrees spin phase resolution. L has a total geometric factor of 1.3 x 10-2 E C M 2 senior, where E is energy in eV, with a nearly identical 180 degrees field of view FOV, radial to the spacecraft, to that of PESA L. EESA high A covers electrons from approximately 200 electron volts to approximately 30 keV though typical values vary from a minimum of approximately 137 electron volts to a maximum of approximately 28 keV in a 32 sample energy sweep each 11.25 degrees of spacecraft spin a has a total geometric factor of 2.0 x 10-1 ECM2 senior, MCP efficiency of about 70% and grid transmission of about 73%. A has a 360 degrees planar FOV tangent to the spacecraft surface which can be electrostatically deflected into a cone up to plus or minus 45 degrees out of its normal plane. PESA low, place, covers ions with a 14 sample energy sweep note that in survey mode the data structures typically take 25 data points at 14 different energies while in burst mode they take 64 data points at 14 different energies, from approximately 100 electron volts to approximately 10 keV often energies range from approximately 700 electron volts to approximately 6 keV each 5.6 degrees of spacecraft spin. Place has a total geometric factor of only 1.6 x 10-4 ECM2 senior but an identical energy angle response to that of PESAH. While in the solar wind, Place reorients itself along the bulk flow direction to capture the solar wind flow which results in a narrow range of pitch angle coverage. PESA high pH, covers ions with a 15 sample energy sweep from as low as approximately 80 electron volts to as high as approximately 30 keV typical energy range is approximately 500 electron volts to approximately 28 keV each 11.25 degrees of spacecraft note that pH has multiple data modes where the number of data points per energy bin can be any of the following, 121, 97, 88, 65, or 56. pH has a total geometric factor of 1.5 x 10-2 ECM2 senior with a MCP efficiency of about 50% and grid entrance post transmission of about 75%. The majority of this section was taken from. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Solid state telescopes. The SST detectors consist of three arrays of double-ended telescopes, each of which is composed of either a pair or triplet of closely sandwiched semiconductor detectors. The center detector thick or T of the triplet is 1.5 square centimeters in area, 500 micrometers thick, while the other detectors, foil F and open o, are the same area but only 300 micrometers thick. One direction of the telescopes is covered in a thin lexan foil, tilde 1500 of aluminum evaporated on each side to completely eliminate sunlight, SST foil, where the thickness was chosen to stop protons up to the energy of electrons, approximately 400 keV. Electrons are essentially unaffected by the foil. 
On the opposite side SST open, a common broom magnet is used to refuse electrons below approximately 400 keV from entering but leaves the ions essentially unaffected. Thus, if no higher energy particles penetrate the detector walls, the SST foil should only measure electrons and the SST open only ions. Each double-ended telescope has two 36 degrees by 20 degrees FWHM FOV, thus each end of the five telescopes can cover a 180 degrees by 20 degrees piece of space. Telescope 6 views the same angle to spin axis as telescope 2, but both ends of telescope 2 have a drilled tantalum cover to reduce the geometric factor by a factor of 10 to measure the most intense fluxes. The SST foil data structures typically have seven energy bins each with 48 data points while the SST open has nine energy bins each with 48 data points. Both detectors have energy resolutions of delta E, E approximately equals 30%. The majority of this section was taken from Topic Wind, MFI The magnetic field instrument MFI on board wind is composed of dual triaxial fluxgate magnetometers. The MFI has a dynamic range of plus or minus 4 nt to plus or minus 65,536 nt, digital resolution ranging from plus or minus 0.001 nt to plus or minus 16 nt, sensor noise level of 10 sps is referred to as high time resolution HTR data in some studies. Topic. Wind SWE The Wind spacecraft has two Faraday cup FC ion instruments. The SWE FCs can produce reduced ion distribution functions with up to 20 angular and 30 energy per charge bins every 92 seconds. Each sensor has a approximately 15 degrees tilt above or below the spin plane and an energy range from approximately 150 electron volts to approximately 8 keV. A circular aperture limits the effects of aberration near the modulator grid and defines the collecting area of the collector plates in each FC. The FCs sample at a set energy for each spacecraft rotation, then step up the energy for the next rotation. Since there are up to 30 energy bins for these detectors, a full reduced distribution function requires 30 rotations or slightly more than 90 seconds. Wind, CONUS and TGRS CONUS remains a very active partner in the Gamma Ray Coordinates Network and the Interplanetary Network. Notifications of astrophysical transients are sent worldwide instantly from CONUS, and are of importance in the subsequent positioning of telescopes everywhere. Thus, the instrument remains an active contributor to the astrophysical community, for instance, with the SWIFT mission. The TGRS instrument was shut off early in the mission due to the planned expiration of coolant. The two gamma ray instruments, CONUS and TGRS, on board of Wind, are described on their high energy astrophysics homepage. Topic: <laughs> Wind impact. The energetic particles, acceleration, composition and transport investigation consists of multiple telescopes including, the Low Energy Matrix Telescope LEMT, Superthermal Energetic Particle Telescope STEP, and Electron Isotope Telescope System ELITE. ELITE is composed of two Alpha Proton Electron ape telescopes and an Isotope Telescope IT. The highest energy telescopes APE and IT failed early in the mission, though APE does two channels of approximately 5 and approximately 20 MeV protons but IT was turned off. However, LEMT covering energies in the 1 to 10 MeV, NUCL range and STEP measuring ions heavier than protons in the 20 keV 1 MeV, NUCL range still continue to provide valuable data. Wind, SMS The Solar Wind and Superthermal Ion Composition Experiment SMS on wind is composed of three separate instruments, Superthermal Ion Composition Spectrometer STICS, High Resolution Mass Spectrometer MASS, and Solar Wind Ion Composition Spectrometer SWIX. STICS determines the mass, mass per charge, and energy for ions in the energy range of 6 to 230 keV e. 
Mass determines elemental and isotopic abundances from 0.5 to 12 keV, E. Swix determines mass, charge, and energy for ions in the energy range of 0.5 to 30 keV, E. The Swix stop MCP experienced a failure resulting in reduced capabilities for this instrument and was eventually turned off in May 2000. The SMS Data Processing Unit DPU experienced a latch-up reset on June 26, 2009 that placed the mass acceleration – deceleration power supply into a fixed voltage mode, rather than stepping through a set of voltages. In 2010, mass experienced a small degradation in the acceleration – deceleration power supply which reduced the efficiency of the instrument, though this does not seriously affect science data analysis. Some discoveries and or contributions to science by the wind spacecraft Observation of relationship between large-scale solar wind magnetosphere interactions and magnetic reconnection at the terrestrial magnetopause. First statistical study of high-frequency electric field fluctuations in the ramp of interplanetary shocks. The study found that the amplitude of ion acoustic waves IAWs increased with increasing fast mode Mach number and shock compression ratio. They also found that the IAWs had the highest probability of occurrence in the ramp region. Observation of the largest Whistler wave using a search coil magnetometer in the radiation belts. First observation of shocklets upstream of a quasi-perpendicular IP shock. First simultaneous observations of Whistler mode waves with electron distributions unstable to the Whistler heat flux instability. First observation of a electrostatic solitary wave at an IP shock with an amplitude exceeding 100 mV per meter. First observation of electron bursting like waves at an IP shock. First observation of the source region of an IP type II radio burst. First evidence for Langmuir wave coupling to Z mode waves. First evidence to suggest that the observed bipolar S structures in the shock transition region are consistent with BGK modes or electron phase space holes. First evidence of a correlation between the amplitude of electron phase space holes and the change in electron temperature. First evidence of three wave interactions in the terrestrial foreshock using bicoherence. First evidence of proton temperature anisotropy constraints due to mirror, firehose, and ion cyclotron instabilities. First evidence of Alvin cyclotron dissipation. First shared with stereo spacecraft observation of electron trapping by a very large amplitude Whistler wave in the radiation belts also seen in stereo observations. First observation of Langmuir and Whistler waves in the lunar wake. First evidence of direct evidence of electron cyclotron resonance with Whistler mode waves driven by a heat flux instability in the solar wind. First evidence of local field aligned ion beam generation by foreshock electromagnetic waves called short large amplitude magnetic structures or slams, which are soliton like waves in the magnetosonic mode. <laughs> List of refereed publications for wind For a complete list of refereed publications directly or indirectly using data from the WIND spacecraft, see https colon slash slash wind.nasa.gov slash bibliographies.php. WIND continues to produce relevant research, with its data having contributed to over 2,000 publications since 2009 and over 2,200 publications prior to 2009. As of March 10, 2018, not including 2018 publications, the total number of publications either directly or indirectly using wind data is approximately 4,615, or an average of approximately 200 publications per year. The average since 2010 is approximately 268 publications per year, or approximately 2,150 publications since 2010. Wind data has been used in over 70 high impact refereed publications with approximately 11 in science, approximately 30 in nature, includes nature, nature physics, nature communications, scientific reports, and scientific American, and approximately 29 in physical review letters. Note that many of these publications utilized wind data directly and indirectly by citing the Omni dataset at Sea to Web, which relies heavily upon wind measurements.
Topic: <laughs> Science highlights in the news. A study primarily using Themis observations utilized data from the WIND spacecraft to support a recent study published in the journal Physical Review Letters that was selected as an editor's suggestion article at Electron Acceleration by Foreshock Disturbances, highlighted by NASA at NASA homepage and at Themis Nuggets. WIND celebrates the 20th anniversary of its launch on November 1, 2014, highlighted on NASA's homepage news. A solar wind workhorse marks 20 years of science discoveries. Project September 2014, highlighted on NASA's website. More than meets the eye. NASA scientists listen to data and popular science. NASA scientists study the sun by listening to it. Publication April 2013, highlighted on NASA's website. NASA's wind mission encounters slams waves. A recent March 2013 publication using data from the WIND spacecraft was highlighted as a Physical Review Letters Spotlight article and a NASA feature article at Solar Wind Energy Source Discovered. Publication April 2012 makes NASA's homepage news, writing the plasma wave. Topic awards The Wind Operations Team, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, Greenbelt, Maryland, received the AIAA Space Operations and Support Award on September 2, 2015. The award honors the team's exceptional ingenuity and personal sacrifice in the recovery of NASA's WIND spacecraft. Jacqueline Snell, engineering manager for WIND, Geotail, and ACE missions, accepted the award on behalf of the team. Award details The WIND Operations Team, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, Greenbelt, Maryland, received the NASA Group Achievement Award for recovery of the WIND spacecraft's command and attitude processor. Award details Topic. See also Topic. Lists of relevant topics List of active solar system probes List of heliophysics missions List of objects at Lagrangian points List of solar system probes List of space telescopes Timeline of Solar System Exploration Topic. Other relevant spacecraft Advanced Composition Explorer ACE, launched 1997, still operational Cassini-Huygens Cluster Helios Magnetospheric Multiscale Mission MMS Messenger Mercury Surface, Space Environment, Geochemistry and Ranging, launched 2004, decommissioned April 30, 2015 Solar Dynamics Observatory SDO, launched 2010, still operational Solar and Heliospheric Observatory SOHO, launched 1995, still operational Solar Maximum Mission SMM, launched 1980, decommissioned 1989 Solar Orbiter Solo, set to launch in 2017 Parker Solar Probe, launched in 2018 Stereo Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory, launched 2006, still operational Time History of Events and Macroscale Interactions During Substorms Themis, launched 2007, still operational Trace Transition Region and Coronal Explorer, launched 1998, decommissioned 2010 Ulysses, launched 1990, decommissioned 2009 Van Allen probes formerly called Radiation Belt Storm Probes or RBSP Voyager Program Voyager 1 Voyager 2 Topic. Relevant organizations Goddard Space Flight Center NASA Topic. Other relevant topics Bow shock Coronal mass ejection Geomagnetically induced current Geomagnetic storm Magnetic reconnection Magnetopause Magnetosphere Plasmosphere Solar energetic particles Solar flare Solar particle event Solar wind Space weather Sun <laughs>